We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good noon, my dear brothers and sisters. Today we celebrate the memorial of the parents of our Blessed Mother Mary, Saints Joachim and Anne. Today we, we pray through their intercession that we will be able to really grow in our faith by making ourselves worthy and fertile soil, a fertile ground, so that God's Word will grow in us. And today we also continue to pray for all of the victims of the recent floods no, that happened in here in Manila and the rest of Luzon, that people who are generous enough will be able to send help, especially for us if we are capable in, in our own little ways, we may, be, may we become a part actually of helping others who are in need. And now to make ourselves worthy to celebrate this Eucharist, let us now acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, God of our fathers, who bestowed on Saints Joachim and Anne this grace, that of them should be born the mother of your incarnate Son, grant to the prayers of both that we may attain the salvation you have promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Return, rebellious children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will take you, one from a city, two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. I will appoint over you shepherds after my own heart who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. When you multi multiply and become fruitful in the land, says the Lord, they will in those days no longer say the art of the covenant of the Lord. They will no longer think of it, or remember it, or miss it, or make another. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the Lord's throne. Their all nations will be gathered together to honor the name of the Lord at Jerusalem and they will walk no longer in their hard-hearted wickedness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. 
shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word. But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no, no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. My dear sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good afternoon again, my dear brothers and sisters. Do you think you are a good soil? Have you been a good soil? Have you been a good place for God's Word to grow, be multiplied, and be spread to others? Were you able to actually, like, Share to others whatever you heard, you have learned here in the church, especially after going to Mass. Nagchichika-chika ba kayo pag uh, umuwi kayo about what you have heard? My dear sisters and brothers, today we are being reminded of the importance of the Word. But not only limited to the Word, but how receptive, how we accept, and how we make our hearts and minds a very good place for the Word of God to actually bear fruit and multiply. But before I will go on to that, I would like to mention first the first reading coming from the book of Jeremiah because this is very important for us to remember and to know that our God, according to Jeremiah, is not an evil God. Because recently, we had the typhoon, diba? Right? And then we had the floods, and for some, we would think, Lord, why have you done this to us? Why have you sent the floods to make your people suffer? My dear brothers and sisters, if you think that way, then I think your God is a very different God from what Jeremiah is telling us today. Because here today, Jeremiah is telling and talking to us in a way that we have a God who would always find a way for all of us who are rebellious to him 
to return to come back to him because he loves us so much god loves us so much that he could not afford to send anything that is evil to us it is very contrary to the nature of god who is good to send something that is evil but what is the secret to have a lasting relationship with god the secret to it is that first you must admit that you are wrong we must admit that we have done something terrible and by our simple admission done in the confession we actually reconcile ourselves to the god who would always wait for us to the god who loves us no matter how sinful we become our admission of our sinfulness makes us actually worthy a worthy soil to god's word which is being sown in all of us no kapag nanghihingi ka ng kapatawaran you become a better person you become that good soil in which god's word will produce a good fruit will sprout and will actually be spread to anybody my dear sisters and brothers today we celebrate the feast of the parents of our blessed mother mary saints joachim and anne and probably will think we could not find them in the bible yes we could not find the parents of saint of mary in the bible we could only trace you now the family the ancestors of saint joseph but never mary's why because it was so important for us and for the evangelists to trace the roots of joseph until david so that we can establish jesus as being the son of david but why are we celebrating it today the feast of saint joachim and anne because we are being reminded that once there were two good people saint joachim and anne who prepared mary who prepared our blessed mother to become a worthy vessel of jesus the son they had to work so hard they had to be very good and receptive to the word they have to really be very faithful to the word of god so that they will become worthy especially saint anne she had to become worthy so that mary will become clean before she will even conceive jesus in her womb may una pa lang naging tapat sa atin and this is saints joachim and anne kaya my dear brothers and sisters today as i end my homily i would like to remind you never mind if you have become sinful never mind if you think that you are not good just learn how to cultivate your heart just learn how to nurture yourselves if you think that you are not a good soil do not try to prepare a good place for god's word to sprout in you so that he will be at work in you in this feast day we all pray you know through the intercession of saints joachim and anne that like them we will be able to prepare a place for jesus to grow and live in our hearts happy feast day and may you find no solace in the fact that jesus loves us very much and that his word would love to dwell in us as long as we become receptive to it please stand with saint joachim and anne let us trust in the lord who knows the needs of our families and the community of the church let our response be lord hear our prayer lord hear our prayer that the church may defend the sanctity of marriage and the value of family life let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that parents may inculcate in the minds and hearts of their children the ways of love and holiness let us pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that children may respect and love their parents and grandparents 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That couples who are estranged from one another may rediscover and appreciate one another in the spirit of peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That God may grant peace to our deceased family members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, bless our homes. Unite your sons and daughters in the one family of your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, these offerings of our homage and grant that we may merit a share in the same blessing of which you promised to Abraham, his descendants, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give, th give them thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time I was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gathered for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, especially Saints Joachim and Anne, Saint Louis Marie de Montfort, Saint Pedro Calungsod and Lorenzo Ruiz, and all those who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. thought by Jesus Christ to pray to the Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now show each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Dear brothers and sisters, behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
your only begotten Son should be born from among humanity, so that by a wonderful mystery humanity might be born again from you. We pray that in your kindness you may sanctify by the spirit of adoption those you have fed with the bread you give your children through Christ our Lord. Amen. So again, before I will give you the final blessing, I would really, I would appreciate and I would like to encourage, you know, especially parents who are here, like Saints Joachim and Anne, may you continue to help your children prepare them to become a place, a good soil for the Word of God to grow. Help them, encourage them to know that the Word of God is always there so that they will also be able to bring good, the good news to everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.